Jameson Quinn. So what Mr. Yellow just said was that the difference between fifth and sixth place may just be statistical, statistical fluctuations. Well, as a statistician, I can say that the difference between 6% and 5%, if, if the difference between fifth and sixth place is, is a statistical fluctuation, then the difference between 6% and 5% may just as well be such a fluctuation. Um, the purpose, the, the reason, the way we avoid uh, having statistical fluctuations decide who is the winner is the second round of voting. And, and that focuses the attention on those five. It is, in fact, regrettable that w who gets into those five, who gets that extra level of attention and scrutiny is, to some degree, a matter of luck. But that is the nature, that, that's just unavoidable. Once it does get that extra scrutiny, I think the who, which of those five gets the award is, in, is not, in fact, a statistical fluctuation. It is based on merit. And so I think that's, that's the only answer we can give. And so I support this amendment. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against the motion? I would ask that if members want to seek recognition and they can stand, that they stand raising their hands, especially on the wings, is very hard to notice. And if you have a blue sheet, use that. Uh, my name is Daniel Rico. Um, I just want you to consider that if so few people are bothering to nominate a work that is falling below a certain threshold, whether you agree that 5% is, should be that threshold or not, that maybe it re isn't actually Hugo worthy if no one's really bothering to nominate a particular work. Can I get your name, sir? Sir, can I get your name? I saw Mr. Garrett first. Are you wishing to speak in favor? Thank you. <coughs> now, wait a second, wait a second. Chris Gear, co-maker. It's not that there's too, again, it's not that there's too few voters, it's that we're spreading it out over six or eight hundred short stories are nominated on a given Hugo cycle. We're just spreading our, our, our 2,000 votes over a lot of, uh, a lot of nomination, or a lot of eligible short stories. That's why we're proposing this to get rid of that yeah, cutoff. Ms. Secor, for what purpose does the member rise? Please. Come up to the. Does this take away from four or against? Both. Hi, I'm Casey Cor, and I don't understand statistics. I would like to move to amend this thing to add a three year sunset clause. Let's try it for three years and come back and decide what we really think about it when we have the numbers. To like try it, you put it like we did for the best fan cast, where it automatically comes back onto the agenda at, I don't know how to phrase it, but it comes back in three years to go back over it. That, it, that would be a lesser change. Yep. Um, I th think we can work on the wording afterwards. Does everybody understand what the intent is? Do we need to have exact wording to go forward? It's just this, this, I can just take it from the sun, because it's yep. any sun. Yeah. Just, just choose a year that you want. All right, is there anybody wishing to speak against that amendment? It hasn't been seconded. Oh. <laughs> Dr. Adams. Andrew Adams. Um, this is not one of these situations where we don't have a lot of data already about what's been happening. I think we can reasonably make a judgment now, given what's, what we've seen from the long list information from the last few years, so I don't think we need a sunset clause on this one. Is there anyone wishing Mr. Stanley? Kevin Stanley. Mr. Chairman, there having been a, already, a, I believe, a sufficient amount of debate on the underlying motion and the amendment, I move the previous question to end the debate on the appending amendment and the underlying question. Second. Is there any objection to calling the question? Seeing none, we will vote on the amendment first. That is to add a sunset clause for three years all those in favor of adding a sunset clause, please raise your hands. All right, hands down. All those opposed? Fails. That motion fails. We will now, <coughs> excuse me, vote on the underlying motion, which is to strike out section 3.8.5.
All those in favor, please raise your hands. All right, hands down, all those opposed. The ayes have it, the motion passes, and section 3.8.5 is removed. We now move on Wait, to, oh. Oh, Okay. I'm ready. Is our videography still good? Yeah. All right. We move on to A.3, which is multiple nominations. That appears on the top of page five of your agendas. Is there anyone wishing to speak? We have eight minutes of debate. Is speak in favor? Mr. Buff, as the maker of the motion. Hi, we proposed this last year as a means of codifying what has been our traditional understanding of the way the Hugos work. Uh, you cannot be nominated in two categories. We want to make that explicit, and we believe that this motion very simply addresses that matter. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the motion? Seeing no one, I'm going to put the question. All those in favor of uh, ratifying multiple nominations as on page five of your agendas, please raise your hands. All right, hands down, all those opposed. All right, the ayes have it, the motion is ratified. We now move on to A.4 which is nominee diversity. We also have eight minutes of debate. Mr. Eastlake, I believe you are the maker of the motion. Would you like to make a speech in favor? Uh, although it's not, uh, my name is Donald Eastlake. Although it's not present in the material you had, I did a study and found that uh, duplicates where there's two um, uh, episodes from the same dramatic series or two works in a written category by the same author, say, two uh, short stories like They've ha happened now and then over the entire history of the Hugo Awards. But f recently, if you look in the last uh, 10 or 15 years, suddenly you have much more cases of many more duplicates. For example, all of the nominees in a dramatic presentation series being from the same uh, dramatic presentation category being from the same series, or three or four written works by the same author, or things like that. And this really crowds out other options and really limits the choice of the voters a lot. So this is intended to solve that problem and uh, gives the, uh, uh, basically the slots on the ballot to no more than two uh, chosen by the ones which have gotten the most nominations. But of course, the author can always, in, usually for written categories at least, the authors can withdraw works that they consider not representative of them and stuff like that. So it's uh, up to the you. Hmm? Sure, I'll give it for a question. Hi, <coughs> Romain Andrew Adams. Uh, I, I'm unsure of how this will actually be implemented by the, um, the Hugo administrators, um, having been part of the Hugo administration team this year, because you normally only contact people when they are eligible to become finalists. So are you suggesting that, is the suggestion here that they will contact them and say, you have four uh, potential finalists, we will only allow at most two. Do you wish to withdraw some of them? Because at the moment, the way this is worded, it seems to me like you will only be able to tell them that they have two, and they won't, be, they won't have the opportunity to withdraw the others. Uh, I believe the, the first of the two uh, situations you described would be the only way it could be administered. Uh, so that all the details of administration are really left to the specific Hugo uh, Awards Administration Committees, which are normally a subcommittee of the particular Worldcon committee, and they would have to tell uh, the author or, uh, for example, uh, that there were f five of their works that would potentially be on the final ballot and uh, they should withdraw any that are not representative, uh, but they, you know, and then they explain the situation basically and then the author would have, or authors in the case of multiple authors, would have